Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the eTrailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Chevy Traverse. The great part about this hitch in particular is going to be the fact that it's completely hidden when not in use. And when you are ready to use your receiver, you're just simply going to remove the two clips or loosen them up on the bottom and you can drop out this panel giving you access to your hitch. The trailer hitch has a matte black powder coat finish that holds up really well to chips and scratches long term. And the receiver tube opening is a two inch by two inch. And this is gonna be kind of the standard size when it comes to ball mounts or any accessories you may be loading up. And all of those accessories are gonna stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip. Now this does not come with the hitch. A lot of times when you pick up accessories, they'll have them included. And something I'd recommend if you plan on leaving accessories on the back of your Traverse, you might wanna look at a locking pin and clip and that way you can lock it in place and know that no one's gonna walk away with your accessories. Your safety chain loops are gonna be a rolled style, making it nice and open for your safety chains, whether it be a standard S hook or even a larger clevis style, it's gonna work on here with no problems. And speaking of towing, uh, you're gonna wanna adhere to the weight capacities of this hitch, whether you're using a ball mount to tow a trailer or having those accessories on. And this one's rated pretty well. As far as your gross trailer weight rating, it's gonna come in at 5,000 pounds. That's the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. Your tongue weight rating is also pretty significant at 750 pounds. And that's the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So your bike racks and cargo carriers or anything that's suspended is gonna fall into that category. And with that capacity, you're gonna be able to get a four bike bike rack loaded up or a cargo carrier loaded with no issues. Um, that's a pretty serious tongue weight. Now it can be used with the weight distribution hitch, but those numbers are gonna stay exactly the same at 5,000 for the gross trailer weight and 750 for the tongue weight. You also wanna check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing and then compare that with the hitch capacities as well as all the components you'll be using. So your ball mount and ball also need to be up to those standards. Take the lowest number and that's what you're gonna to wanna to stick with to keep you safe. The receiver tube does sit a little bit recessed in the bumper, which is nice so we can cover it up, but you do wanna make sure when choosing ball mounts or accessories that stow upwards, that you're gonna have that availability to be able to do that without causing any damage to the fascia. So from the center of our hitch pin hole to the furthest point of our fascia, we're coming in about three inches. So I really don't worry too much that you're gonna have any issues. Just know that when those accessories are stowed in a vertical position, you're probably not gonna be able to open up your hatch without having to drop those down, but kind of minor in the grand scheme of things. As far as ground clearance goes, this one's really good. It's coming in at 20 inches and really don't worry too much that it'll bottom out. Uh, just know that they do extend the length of the vehicle. So if you're going up a pretty steep incline, they can hit the ground before the vehicle, you know. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind with those loaded. But with that measurement, that's a great way to determine the riser drop necessary for a ball mount. You can measure the height of the coupler of your trailer, compare that with those 20 inches, and that should give you the difference to figure out that riser drop necessary. When it comes to the installation of this hitch, it's not terribly hard to do, but you are gonna be removing the fascia and that's so we can get that located uh, you know, in this open spot with that cover. So pulling the fascia off of a vehicle isn't terribly hard and this one is no different, but I get it, it can be a little bit uh, overwhelming it just to get a hitch on. Um, from there though, you're really just kind of bolting in some hardware, we're gonna fish it up and you will have to drop the exhaust slightly, but that's kind of part of the installation as it bolts into the bumper beam. Um, but overall, it's not too terribly hard to do in your driveway or garage. And uh, if you watch the video and decide maybe it's not for you, maybe you don't have the space, the tools, or even the want to do this yourself, you can use eTrailer's dealer locator to find someone close to you to get your hitch installed. But for you DIYers that are doing this yourself, follow along. I'll walk you through all the steps to make sure you get your hitch installed. Let's take a look at that. Before beginning our installation, a few things that you're gonna to want to make sure that you take care of uh, is gonna be having a safe place to put your fascia. Once we take this off, you know, that way it doesn't get scratched. You might want an extra set of hands for this as it can get a little bit cumbersome and heavy. Um, so if you have someone nearby, you may give them a heads up that you might need them. Um, and also keep all your hardware nice and organized. That way for reinstallation, everything goes back nice and easy. Um, and also something else that I'll add in is if you are doing trailer wiring, uh, this has a factory prep package that's located back here. It's super easy to do when you have the fascia taken off. So if you are planning on doing wiring along with your hitch, now would be the time to have that handy. So let's go ahead, we'll start taking the fascia off and we're gonna go to these two plastic 
covers that we have and we're just going to pry those open with a small flathead or a trim panel tool and that's going to give us access to our seven millimeter screws. So there's going to be uh, two of these on each side. So a total of four screws. We'll pop those down and get these removed. you'll find that we have a T20 Torx bit on here. So we're gonna have one on each side. We'll go ahead and get that removed. On each of the wheel wells, we're gonna be removing five screws. They're gonna be a T15. So if you go along this edge on the wheel well liner, you'll see these go up here. There's the four and then the fifth one's tucked back a little bit. Now it's gonna get a little bit tight here, so you might need uh, you know, a quarter inch bit with a small ratchet like this to be able to gain access to it. But we'll go ahead and get these removed. Now with those removed, we're gonna be pulling back this uh, fender trim here. Now you wanna be careful. You don't wanna peel it back too far because it can cause a crease and a lot of times uh, that's gonna be a permanent crease. Take your time, there's gonna be a series of clips but we're gonna bring it back to where we have hardware located back here to get the fascia off. Get this popped off. There is a plastic tab that goes into the bottom. If you just pull back a little bit to get that out, it should pop off pretty easy as you can see here. That's gonna give us access to the seven millimeter screw that's here. So to make it a little bit easier, if you need to, you can take some paper towels or a rag and put it on this section here to just kind of keep that propped open for you. Now we're also gonna have some T15 Torx bits that are attaching to some brackets underneath on the fascia. Um, so you can actually remove either one, but I'll take this one off of our bracket. I put some painter's tape along the edge of the fascia as well as the quarter panel. And this is to help just make sure that we're not scratching the clear coat. So I even put some on the metal clips down here um, because as we pull this off, we don't want to damage our vehicle in the process. And also when we put the fascia back on, it's just a nice easy way to prevent scratches. So to get the fascia removed, have a place set up that you can store it. And this is when you're gonna to wanna to grab that extra set of hands. It just gets pretty cumbersome. We're just gonna peel back the clips that are along here and don't pull the fascia back too far. Once you get it loosened up, it's very possible there's gonna be an electrical connector. But if you push down on the wheel well liner, you can get hands behind here, and you're just simply gonna work your way up these clips. And just kind of take your time here. Um, you don't wanna damage the clips, so just uh, nice even pressure. And once you get both sides peeled back like this, uh, that's when you can start to kind of uh, get underneath here, loosen it up, and there's gonna be a series of clips along here. So we'll just kind of wiggle this back and forth. There we go. And with that popped off, we'll get our electrical connector separated. Pretty easy, it's a locking tab for the red here. We'll just push that back. We'll then push on the tab and then we can separate the plug. Now we'll take our fascia and set it aside somewhere safe. We're gonna be removing the hardware on our bumper beam and part of that is your exhaust isolators have a bracket that bolts up to the bumper beam that we have here. So before we remove any of this, we wanna support our exhaust so it's not hanging down, causing stress downstream. Um, so if you're doing this in your driveway or garage, you can just put a block of wood or a cardboard box, something to just support this so it's not gonna be hanging. I'll be using just a cam buckle strap to support it here and just create a cradle. We'll get our bumper beam removed and it's gonna be a 15 millimeter socket to get the nuts taken off as well as the bolts below. And we will be reusing these nuts, so just keep these handy. This just kind of dropped out of the way. You can see we'll be able to remove our bumper beam. So I'll go ahead and get the other side done. Um, as far as these bolts, we will not be reusing them and the bumper beam is not gonna be going back on. So you can do whatever you'd like with those. There might be some gasket material that's kind of holding this in place, but we got this removed. Now you can grab your hitch, slide this into the frame rails. 
get that passed over the stud. And now we'll just take the nuts and get these hand tightened in place to hold our hitch up. We need to fish wire hardware through this access hole. Ours had a sticker that was just on this spot, so uh, just make sure that that's taken off so you can pass things through here. And what we're going to be doing is taking the coiled section of our pull wire, and underneath there's a hole that's right behind, kind of by the heat shield. There's also one that's back here. So make sure that the hitch is aligned. You can kind of pass your finger through there, and we'll take the coiled end, and we'll feed it through that access hole, and then pass that up to the hole that we have here. And make sure that you still have a tail left on the wire here because we'll be using that to pull that through. And we'll take a spacer block, feed that over the coiled end. You can just drop that in. And then the carriage bolt will thread onto here. And then we can pass that in. And we'll just pull our pull wire. You may jostle it around so it can drop in that spacer block. And we should have the stud dropping through just like so. And leave the pull wire on here. That way we can make sure that, uh, you know, it's not going to pop up in the frame. So just leave this here. We're then going to do it for the front hole. And then we'll just repeat on the other side. With them all in place, we can now take our pull wire off. And very important that you don't push it back up in the frame rail. So what a lot of times I'll do is uh, put pressure on it when we put our washer in place so it doesn't push. Um, and speaking of that, we have our conical tooth washers. That's going to slide on first with the teeth facing up. So just lightly pass that. And then you can push on the side of that to hold that stud in place. We'll then take the nut that's included in the hardware and get this started. We're just going to repeat that same step for the remaining three. Following along with the instructions with this video, you might notice that they have you put these bolts in place um, and start torquing everything down. But I found that it's generally pretty difficult to get a torque wrench back in here because of the muffler clearance. So I'm going to wait. We're going to tighten these down so it cinches everything in first. And then we're going to come back and tighten these down. Now, something that's uh, kind of curious here is if you're spinning it around, it's not threading. That's because that, that spacer block is spinning around. So what you can do is pull down and put pressure as you spin. And a lot of times that'll keep the bolt in place. If not, using an impact, a lot of times you can kind of zip that in. Just make sure that it is dropped into that uh, spacer block. You'll feel the carriage bolt kind of go into place. Uh, and with an impact, some speed, a lot of times that'll get it started. But first things first, we'll go ahead and get these tightened down with that 15 millimeter socket. Now to get these bottom bolts tightened down, it's going to be a three quarter inch socket. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, trying to get these started can be a little bit tricky, but just a little bit of power and speed here is allowing us to get that to start to spin around better. Now we'll come back with our torque wrench in that three quarter inch socket and get these torqued down to the torque setting found in the instruction manual. If you need a torque wrench, we have them available here at E-Trailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. It's going to make sure that long term, obviously, that the hardware is going to stay tight enough for the hitch to be able to pull stuff, but also not too tight, putting stress on any of the hardware. Now we'll grab our longer bolts with the smaller conical tooth washers, and we're going to bolt up our exhaust. You probably have to lift the exhaust up so it's in place, but get one started here, just hand tight, and then we'll get this one in as well, and then we'll do the other side. With those started, we're going to get these snugged down before coming back with our torque wrench, and they're going to be a 17 millimeter socket. Make sure you adjust the torque settings for this hardware. You can find that in the instruction manual. And we'll go through and torque these down. And as far as the factory nuts that we put back in place, I'm going to just use the same torque setting that I'm using on these. I think that's going to be a good option for us.
Now once you have all your hardware torqued down, you've officially installed your hitch, you just need to put the fascia back on and make sure you get your electrical connections put back up and take whatever you had supporting the exhaust out. Uh, but I mentioned earlier that this is a good time to do wiring. Reason being, your factory tow package plug is right here and you can still access it once the fascia is on. It's way easier to do it this way and get a nice clean run. Um, so if you do have that wiring harness, go ahead and do that. We have a Takancha on ours, which is the ones, that's a good brand that I recommend normally. Um, we really rarely have issues with them. So I just simply ran this over, zip tied it up to our safety chain loop. So at this point, I'll get our fascia put back on. And that was a look at installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Chevrolet Traverse.